vocabulary of agent-based models. I could um, go on with a bit of a bit of material to sort of talk about what we're going to be covering and give you, give you a, a look at things. But I'd like to ask, um, given we've covered a lot of ground, we've covered events, we've covered mobility, we've covered networks and connections, we've covered space and different types of spatial embedding and discrete and continuous time. We've discovered, you know, we've we've looked at state charts and we've looked at at the uh, capturing heterogeneity within models using parameters and variables, et cetera. We've hit a lot of things, and you folks are to be congratulated for having survived the boot camp. I, I'm tempted to get these, you know, get these buttons made, like I survived the agent-based modeling boot camp. Um, we should really give these things out. Um, uh, but I want to ask you, are there any questions that you have over any of the material, anything you've seen thus far? Yes. That's the old slide. Yeah. Um, so I'd updated it um, within the past few days. With uh, it's on the Dropbox, the, the new slides for that. Really. Hmm. Oh, interesting. Okay, yeah, I thought I'd put it on Google Drive. I, I could be wrong. I'll, I'll go to check in it. Thank you for pointing that out. Um, maybe we'll, do you want to talk a little bit about GIS space? I mean, do you want to know about that? I mean, if, okay. Right. Yeah, yeah, so I, I have a, okay, thank you. I, I, um, I did think I had updated that, and uh, well, you saw the slides this morning related to that, so I'll make sure that's updated. Um, GIS space is, um, you know, allows us the ability to load in GIS maps, and and fundamentally, um, within within GIS space, we can we can interrogate agents, and they can carry around a representation of their their um, their position geographically, and. Um, we haven't used it a huge amount. Um, I do some of our. I should say I haven't personally used it a bunch. Some members of our group have used it to, specifically to represent um, the uh, cervid uh, population, so the movement of deer over the landscape. So keep track of sort of um, in what uh, landscape zones a given deer is located, um, nearby zones and their characteristics, because deer are attracted to certain types of, of vegetation. And and uh, GIS information is quite central to kind of classifying uh, where they are and 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 to understanding where what type of resources they need uh, they're they're near. So um, so that is we did use that. Um, Any logic six, I would say the support was uh, was uh, limited. Um, it was okay. We did it and we were able to do it to get a lot of value out of it. Any logic seven has. Uh, 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 has um, placed uh, for the AnyLogic 7 general version, they've placed a big emphasis in improving this. And I'm not totally clear how much of that is in this particular version versus in the coming version. My sense is that this version has some basic features, but I understand for the next, within the next year, they're planning a really big push in the GIS support so that it will be much easier to to bring data back and forth with GIS systems, and so that essential GIS functionality would be built into any logic. Right now, I think of it as a slight variant of continuous space, and um, I think over the next year you'll see it turn into something much larger. Okay, um, but uh, fundamentally, uh, it is a very useful, um, very useful, uh, very useful mechanism to have in place. One thing they did put into place with this version is um, being able to change units of measure and, and have a, a notion of scale of depiction like of a map. And so you'd know that this map you know, can be depicted at multiple scales. So there's kind of a visual scale versus a physical scale. And that's really a, a useful distinction that you know, you're showing an underlying map which depicts things at such and such a scale, but you're showing it at a reduced level or something along those lines. Um, so uh, they do have some mechanisms in there for coding different uh, units of length, et cetera. Uh, 
anyway, I hope those are, are some useful comments. Other questions? Other questions about any of this material? Yes. Yes. Vector. I'm pretty sure it's vector images. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I'm, I thought it was quite specifically vector, but I could be wrong about that. Um, but uh, I could refer you to someone who's used it quite extensively. It could give you the clear answers on that. Okay. Good question. Okay. Other questions. Yes. Oh, sure, sure, okay. Um, uh, let's let's do that. Um, uh, okay. Um, do you want me to here? Um, I'll I'll go create a new model. Um, so uh, here we go. Um, and this is gonna be totally ad lib. So um, uh, this will be um, dynamic event demonstration, something like this. We'll see see if it it succeeds or if it's a dud. Okay, um, so let's add an agent type person on this, um, and uh, and then uh, we're going to to add in to a person a state chart. Um, oh, a good good point. Um, one thing I'd be careful about. It's my understanding that so there used to be an issue with AnyLogic six that if you didn't create a visual press representation for a person and you added them to a population, it would be a problem in early versions of any Logic 6 because you couldn't later add it in. Then they added a button that said, recreate presentation, and it was fine. And so you press this button and it would say, oh, they have a representation, a presentation now, I'm gonna use it. Um, and then in any Logic 7, that button seems to have been removed. And I'm not sure they, dealt with the underlying issue of, you know, if you drag this person in the presentation, into the population, can you give them a presentation later? I'm not sure they dealt with that. And I have my doubts based on what I'm hearing from people. I have a problem, have a problem yesterday. Okay. You, you need to drag them back. back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a pain. Um, so uh, I'll, I'll see if I can give some feedback um, uh, on that matter. Okay. So let's, let's go check this out. I. I I'm conscious of the time, and uh, we will need to move on to the, uh, to the final component of the day, which is the, the Java elements. But but let me just do this, like appointment state chart, okay? Um, by the way, you notice my naming convention. Um, there's a naming convention in software engineering where you either will name uh, something by sort of its type first or, or put it last. And it'll make it clear when you see the name what sort of thing it is. And so I like to sort of uh, to, to, to weave that into the name. Okay, so um, uh, this will be, you know, not at appointment, um, so, or at home, whatever, you know, um, uh, at home, and then there'll be an appointment. Think about this for an elderly person who's frail and needs to come in periodically for appointments having to do, think about a low-income elderly person who has to come in for appointments associated with managing their diabetes. Um, and so this will be um, go to appointment, right? Um, and and here um, we're going to set it to be a message-based transition. And here we'll um, we'll set it so that uh, right. I'm just trying to think here. Um, sure, we could do this a couple different ways, but uh, fine. Um, We'll, we'll have sort of uh, go home, okay? Um, go home, great. Um, uh, and uh, here we will go um, after a certain short timeout of one hour. Great, great, great. Um, and this will be at appointment, okay? Um, at appointment. Um, terrific. Um, so, so here we have this person coming in for an appointment, and they'll they'll also be a sort of walk-in transition here. So this would be sort of walk-in appointment. They they come and they present for care without any being a preset appointment. So this would be walk-in. Okay, um, great. And that they'll occur with a rate of um, 
let's let's make um, let's make the time unit of this days sort of one every um, one every um, uh, yeah sure one every a thousand days but a little bit less than three years okay so we're going to set the time unit of this to be days um, days fine and and then their appointment will take um, uh, one hour right one times hour is the is the time on oops hey okay great great now at the time they leave this appointment, a follow-up appointment may be scheduled. Based on their condition during this, there may be a follow-up appointment scheduled, okay? And um, we want to capture the fact that they may be scheduled to come for a, a following appointment after exactly 30 days from now, okay? So let's do this. Um, we want to go create a... Uh, a um, there is a dynamic event here, which will be schedule new appointment. Okay, uh, schedule, um, uh, you know, schedule uh, or um, attend scheduled uh, or you know, it'd be more like um, scheduled appointment due, appointment due, right? Something like that. Okay. Now, normally this would need some parameters to do its job. It's like, okay, what? Um, what information would it need? Maybe it's an appointment about, you know, to get your blood sugar levels checked, your HbA1c's checked, or something like that. I'm going to gloss over that now. But in general, you'd pass parameters here to it that would let it do its job. But let it do its job some time from now. But I don't think that's really the crux of your question. I'm trying to show where these are used are useful. So, so folks. Um, with a 30% probability, if random true, and actually this would be much better to have. Yeah, it's better to have in a branch. It's at least graphical. Big, a, a big point of, of um, note here, folks. If you have a chance between doing something graphically or in code, it'll be more transparent to your stakeholders and to yourself. It'll remind you of what's there if you do it graphically. So unless there's a... A, a, a steep performance penalty or what have you, I'd suggest that you think about doing it graphically. Oh, no, I don't want that. Hey, get rid of you. Um, okay, here we go. Um, okay, um, you can see I have kind of a personal relationship with the software. Um, okay, so um, get over there. Okay, there you go. Um, okay, great, great. Okay, so um, this, is, uh, this is like, uh, so go home transition. And this is um, go home um, uh, with um, subsequent uh, appointment scheduled, something like that. Okay, and and this will be under a certain condition. I'm going to say random true, and it's going to be based on the person's condition. If this person had adverse blood sugar levels as measured, maybe they're going to be brought in for HbA1c testing. If they had, if they exhibited um, several carries, maybe they're going to be brought in for, uh, for drilling or whatever, okay? So it's random true 30%, they're going to have an appointment scheduled. And in that case, now watch this. Okay, but normally they'll just go back for walk-in use, okay? Here by default, they'll go back for walk-in. Here by default, they're just going through walk-in. Here we're going to pre-schedule an appointment, and this is the catch. This is the crux. This is the heart of the matter, okay? We're going to do scheduled appointment due, so I've got to uh, think what it is. It's create, is it create schedule, is, is that it? Yeah, create scheduled appointment due. And we want to say how far in the future is this going to be, and it's going to be 30 times day, okay? It's going to be 30 days in the future that we're going to schedule this appointment, okay? We're going to schedule it. Now, normally we fill in other information here beyond the time. We'd fill in what they need to do to, you know, at the, to do at the appointment. Um, ah, uh, yeah, yeah. You could fill in, you know, what, what work is needed for that person so that when they get the message, they'll present for that type of care. But this, is, this exhibits the basic thing, the basic deal. And so when this, mess, when this event goes off, what's going to happen? Um, uh, when this, oh, Oh, the other thing we need to do, well, no, and because it's in person, we don't need to do this. We could just send this 
so we could say um, uh, appointment state chart. So really, it's this dot appointment state chart dot, and it's what is it? Receive message, receive message, and it's like uh, go to um, go to the appointment, or you know, uh, your um, I'll go to the appointment. Sure, um, appointment reminder, appointment uh, reminder, right? And and there we go. Okay. Um, so now what's going to happen is if they see this appointment with a certain probability based on their condition, here it's just random, um, they'll be scheduled a follow-up appointment, okay? And they'll come in and 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 if come in exactly 30 days later. Otherwise, they will they will just go back and sort of um, uh, r remain um, subject to walk-in. So if we run this sort of thing. Um, so let's go to main. This is a very contrived example, and you could capture this particular example with two different states. One for sort of a, a awaiting a walk-in appointment, you know, a sort of situation where you've scheduled the future appointment, and one where you haven't. Let's just have a single person so we're not distracted. Um, there we go. Okay, um, so here we go. Okay, um, here's this person. Let's go down to the level of the person. Okay, here they're at home. Oh man, it's gonna be a long time till this thing is firing off. Um, okay, um, uh, but if we do it at maximum mode, it's gonna go really quick. Um, so uh, what to do? Let's let's make it a shorter time between walk-ins, right? Um, but then they're probably uh, um, okay. Um, word only so. Um, it'd be nice to to this. Let's not make it one out of a thousand. Let's make it one out of uh, so it'll be about. Um, It'll be a longer period of time, uh, about 100 days on average between them to walk in. Um, so fundamentally, they're not going to be going in um, for an appointment until they walk in. Okay, um, let's get it to show. How do I get it to show the countdown here? Show name. Yeah, you do the show name. Okay, there we go. Um, okay, okay, go down to the person. Okay, here's this person. Okay, oh great, it's gonna be about a year. Um okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um come on. Um Okay, um okay, boo 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 okay, slow down now. Um hold your horses. Um okay, okay, now watch this. They're gonna come in for the appointment now and they're gonna do that and then with thirty percent probability they're gonna go this way. We're gonna see, okay, um okay, um Actually, we didn't get to see which way they went, did we? Um, I don't think it visually shows you what's scheduled here. But basically, it would pre-schedule an appointment for them to um, to come in in 30 days uh, if 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 with that 30% probability. So here, this is used to sort of schedule their appointment ahead of time. Is that helpful? Sure. Precisely. It's a fixed schedule. It's sort of some, yeah, by default. I mean, you can get it to start and stop, but basically, that's right. Here, I mean, this notion of dynamic, I mean, both are occurring over time. So in that sense, in a mathematical sense, they're both dynamic. Or in a modeling sense, they're both dynamic. This dynamic has to do with a computer science sense of dynamic, meaning that the scheduling of it is determined when the model's running sort of live. It's determined based on criteria that aren't available ahead of time. So, you, so with a with a standard event, you sort of say, you know, um, have this event go off every month on the month, you know, to report this data, or have this go event go off at this rate. But here, you don't have that information ahead of time. You don't know how many of these there are going to be, um, how many of these, um, you know, appointments are going to need to be made. You don't know when they'll be made. That's all determined on the fly. It's determined sort of, as we'd say, dynamically as the model evolves. You know, oh, there's more ill people. Okay, we've got a schedule for each of them. We schedule an event. And this goes off one time. It's like it. you set it up to go off, boom, and it's going to go off, and it's going to bring that person into the appointment, um, and uh, by sending this reminder, they're going to come in. Is that helpful? So it, it kind of uh, goes off, um, you know, the, the, it's brokered, it's determined 
when it will go off uh, live dur during the model operation and an as-needed basis. Does that make sense? I wish I had a better example because normally you pass lots of information to it saying like, this is your context, this is what you, and this information is used to do, to undertake the action. And uh, given time, I could elaborate the example, but that's all I could do on the top of my head. I think it's a good setup because they've just come out of an appointment and you know, they're going to yeah. have all sorts of information which they'll need to bring in for the next. Exactly. So it's a good setup. It's a good setup for it. If I could just unpack it into, yeah. you know, they present for care for, um, for a cavity filling or they present for care for an HbA1c test or something like that, what their needs are as assessed. Okay? So any, que any more questions before we launch into the Java? Material? Okay. Can I click it? I mean, right now? Yeah. Um, this this guy? Yeah, it's unconditional right now. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing, sir. Right now. I mean, in general, there would be, but but here, there's nothing right now. I mean, it's a contrived example, but presumably they get operated on, and their needs get determined. And those needs would be reflected in whether they get an appointment scheduled or not. Does that help? Now, you could do this with two states. They could go to a state at home not waiting an appointment, at home waiting an appointment. But that's not that. That, that, that means you'd have to multiply the states just to keep track of, oh, they're awaiting an appointment, which is a little bit artificial. Mm -hmm. OK? Is that helpful? OK. OK. So can we go to the Java? Yeah. OK. OK. Um, so we're going to use our um, 